Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today is going to be another view or antenna testing uh, of an antenna that I just received from China. Um, actually, this antenna is actually designed for ADS-B. Uh, so I'm just going to simply open this up and I'm going to show you this antenna. Uh, this is what an antenna looks like. Basically, it's a collinear antenna uh, that is designed for an application which is ADS-B application, which is normally used for uh, aircraft uh, ADS-B signals because every time an aircraft fly, it sends an unencrypted beacon to traffic control tower that consists of an altitude and, and the flight number and which direction is going. So this is an antenna which is specifically designed for ADS-B at 1090 megahertz so i'm just i just received this antenna on weekend so i'm here to test this antenna using my vector network analyzer uh, uh, this is simply made on fr4 uh, which is a flame resistance material which is a very commonly used pcb material and this type of antenna is known as a collinear antenna uh, so this is a basically an sma port it has an sma port female which i'm going to connect on to my uh, vector network analyzer since it's a single port device i just need a single port configuration all right so let's just look at how does it look like on my display s11 so this is the s11 graph right now i know it's not properly calibrated people will tell me that it's not properly calibrated because you can see this lump uh, this should be as flat of a line because the only thing that i'm interested in the only thing that i can actually check on antennas is actually an S11, S11, which is going to be a return loss versus frequency. So I just wanted to check and see that they're claiming that this is operating at 1090 megahertz. So let's look at the resonance at 1090 megahertz and let's see the reflection coefficient at that point. So even though my calibration is a little bit out, I really don't care because my VNA is operating from 100 kilohertz all the way up to 8.5 gigahertz. So basically, I'm just looking at a band somewhere around this area. And there's hardly any loss. Uh, let me just put a marker. Uh, where's the marker? Uh, marker right here. Let me just move this. So at 4.15, really, I'm actually not interested in. Uh, and uh, so I would expect to see a resonance at 1090, which is somewhere around here. Uh, uh, 1090 somewhere around here so this is this is what my resonance point is I know as you can see that when it's properly calibrated the 0 dB there should be a f flat line without anything connected to it but I can see a loss of about negative 0.4 dB uh, I think which is good enough uh, uh, I can subtract that easily uh, at 1.07, even at 1.2 gigahertz minus 0.6 dB. So I can just simply subtract that. So now what I'm doing, I'm actually connecting my antenna uh, to my uh, VNA port. And once I connect this antenna, let's see what happens. So right now, this antenna is connected. And I'm going to leave this antenna right here and I'll just leave it here or probably just lay down on my board and wow uh, let's let's look at this antenna the performance of this antenna by moving a marker m1 I'm just simply moving marker m1 man oh man I wasn't expecting it to perform like this this is amazing this is really really amazing as you can see at 1.097 I'm getting at about negative 100, negative 14 dB, which is very, very good. I wasn't expecting the performance of this antenna to be too, too good. This is too good. Uh, 1090 at 1090, if you were to look at my marker, you're getting about negative 16. So antenna is properly matched and properly designed. Uh, and then if I were to look at M2, if I bring M2, I'm just going to bring move M2 here at this point uh, just to see at 1090 on the other side so, so i can calculate the bandwidth as well uh right here at this point so m2 at 1.03 megahertz i'm getting about negative 16. so the way we can calculate bandwidth is actually 
looking at the fatness of these two peaks. So at about negative negative 16 dB and I have a point which is right here and then I have another point right here. So first point is 1.03, the other point is 1.09, so 1.03 minus 1.09, 0 0.06 or about 60 kilohertz of bandwidth. Uh, 60 or no sorry 6 megahertz of bandwidth if I'm not mistaken 0 0.09 minus 0 0.3 uh, yeah this is about 6 megahertz of bandwidth so that is pretty good I, I wasn't expecting it to perform at dot on and spot on at uh, 1090 so this antenna is really good and I paid like trust me I paid very minimal amount for it now if I were to move my marker M3 there was also some resonance frequencies as well so I can use this antenna not just for one at 1090 at 3.4 gigahertz I can use this uh, antenna let's bring another marker marker 4 now these are all resonance point I have, I'm not interested I'm, I'm actually interested in seeing these peaks so these are all different points where I can use this antenna but the antenna is performing really good at at uh, at 1090 I wasn't expecting it to see the performance like this and M3 at 3.3 gigahertz uh, as you can see this antenna if I were to move my marker it's not performing good at all at any of those uh, uh, of those your Wi-Fi frequencies so this is a very bad Wi-Fi antenna so if you were to use this antenna to capture Wi-Fi signal, this will not work. I mean, 2.4 gigahertz, you're getting negative 6. And the rule of thumb that you need to remember is that negative 10 dB is the point. Anything, uh, anything above negative 10 dB is no good. What I mean to say above is negative 9, negative 8, negative 6. Anything below negative 10, like negative 11, 12, 13, 20, negative 30, 40, 50 is really, really good. So wow, I myself is very much surprised to see the performance of this antenna. And also if you were to use this antenna for GSM, this is really bad. So because at 992, you're getting about negative 10 dB as I move along. So anything above or anything less than 1090, anything, any, anything less than 1090, 1 gigahertz, this antenna is no good. But I'm seeing multiple peaks. So, so I hope you like this small tutorial on the performance of my ADS-B1090 uh, PCB based antennas. Why do I need PCB? Why do we use PCB antennas? Because they are low cost, uh, low complexity and low power antennas and, 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 and we can make this part of our circuit as well. Like for example, you have probably seen it in ESP modules and you can see it on your mobile phones. Everything is based on these PCB based antennas. So I hope you like this small tutorial. I am really amazed by the performance of this antenna. I hope you like the small tutorial on uh, ADSB antennas. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.